The Little Hero of Holland, adapted by Etta Austin Blaisdell and Mary Frances Blaisdell. <laughs> Here is the true story of a brave heart, one willing to hold on as long as it took to get the job done. Holland is a country where much of the land lies below sea level. Only great walls called dikes keep the North Sea from rushing in and flooding the land. For centuries, the people of Holland have worked to keep the walls strong so that their country will be safe and dry. Even the little children know the dikes must be watched every moment and that a hole no larger than your finger can be a very dangerous thing. Many years ago, there lived in Holland a boy named Peter. Peter's father was one of the men who tended the gates in the dikes called sluices. He opened and closed the sluices so that ships could pass out of Holland's canals into the great sea. One afternoon in the early fall, when Peter was eight years old, his mother called him from his play. Peter, I want you to go across the dike and take these cakes to your friend. Do not stop to play. If you go quickly, you'll be home again before dark. The little boy was glad to go on such an errand and started off with a light heart. He stayed with the poor blind man a little while to tell him about his walk along the dike and about the sun and the flowers and the ships far out at sea. Then he remembered his mother's wish that he should return before dark, and bidding his friend goodbye, he set out for home. As he walked beside the canal, he noticed how the rains had swollen the waters and how they beat against the side of the dike, and he thought of his father's gates. I am glad they are so strong. If they gave way, these pretty fields would be covered with water. What would become of us? I suppose father calls them the angry waters because they are angry for him keeping them out so long. As he walked along, Peter sometimes stopped to pick the pretty blue flowers that grew beside the road, or to listen to the rabbit's soft tread as they rustled through the grass. But oftener, he smiled as he thought of his visit to the poor blind man, who had so few pleasures and was always so glad to see him. Suddenly, he noticed that the sun was setting and that it was growing dark. Mother will be watching for me. I'd better run home. Just then, he heard a noise. It was the sound of trickling water. He stopped and looked down. There in the dike was a small hole through which a tiny stream was flowing. Any child in Holland is frightened at the thought of a leak in the dike. Peter understood the danger at once. If the water ran through a little hole, it would soon make a larger one and the whole country would be flooded. In a moment, he saw what he must do. Throwing away his flowers, Peter scurried down the side of the dike and thrust his finger into the tiny hole. The flowing of the water was stopped. Oh, the angry waters must stay back now. I can keep them back with my finger. Holland shall not be drowned while I am here. This was all very well at first, but soon it grew dark and cold. The little fellow shouted and screamed. I'm here! Over here! But no one heard him. No one came to help him. It grew still colder, and his arm ached and began to grow stiff and numb. He shouted again. <laughs> Will no one come? Mother! Mother! 
but his mother had looked anxiously along the dyke road many times since sunset for her little boy and now she had closed and locked the cottage door thinking that peter was spending the night with his blind friend and that she would scold him in the morning for staying away from home without permission peter tried to whistle but his teeth chattered with the cold he thought of his brother and sister in their warm beds of his dear father and mother I must not let them be drowned. I must stay here until someone comes. If I have to stay all night. The moon and stars looked down on the child, crouching on a stone on the side of the dike. His head was bent and his eyes were closed, but he was not asleep. For every now and then, he rubbed the hand that was holding back the angry sea. I'll stand it somehow. So he stayed there all night, keeping the sea out. Early the next morning, as he walked along the top of the dike on his way to work, a man thought he heard a groan. Looking over the edge, he saw a child clinging to the side of the great wall. What's the matter? Are you hurt? I'm keeping the water back. Tell them to come quickly. The alarm was spread. People came running with shovels, and the hole was soon mended. They carried Peter home to his parents, and before long, the whole town knew how he had saved their lives that night. To this day, they have never forgotten the brave little hero of Holland.